Hi, I'm Lil Newman, the host of Viewpoint, and my co-host Susan Solomon isn't here right now, but she'll be joining us next week. Viewpoint's mission is to bring you resources, what's going on in your community, <clears throat> and we do it by bringing you people that are on the front lines. And today's guest is Ann Cunningham, educational advocate. Welcome, Ann. Thanks Hello. for being here. Thank you for having me. So, also, your title is um, student Advo advocate for students. Yes. So sure. that hits me, and I think about IEP, IEPs, right? Yes. For 504s. 504 plans. And all that. Yes. So can you give us some information about an IEP, what that entails? An IEP is an individual education program that students have, and they can start as early as, um, right shortly after birth, if there's okay. a child born with some kind of deficit, um, or, or if they need occupational therapy, physical therapy. Mm -hmm. But an IEP is an educational program that's written for that individual child Got to it. address their learning needs mm -hmm. at their levels. Got it. Uh, if a, if so a, a parent can ask for an IEP, right? Yes. They can, they can request it. They can, and what I, what's recommended is that you go to the teacher and you speak mm -hmm, to the teacher mm -hmm. because you want to become a team with your right. with the teacher. Mm -hmm. You go to the teacher and you speak with him or her mm -hmm. and you if you have academic concerns for your child, mm -hmm. the teacher can either support that mm -hmm. or negate that. Okay. Because sometimes parents become a little anxious right. about Absolutely. their child That's when they start right. comparing them to That's kids right. in the the mm -hmm. neighborhood. Or another kid, or the way they had an older child and yes. he's doing different things, different levels. Okay. Yes. So you start with the teacher uh, and usually the teacher will encourage the parent to, if, if the teacher is seeing the child has some kind of academic mm -hmm. difficulty, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll have a plan. Mm -hmm. It may even go to um, a student committee mm -hmm. and they may try RTI response to intervention. Okay. And Which is like the lowest level. If you don't mind me interrupting. No, not at all. Okay. So response to intervention is where they will try different interventions for your child. Got it. Um, you know, in in the lower grades, maybe that might be some additional reading help mm -hmm. or some time with the math teacher. Right. Uh, and if after a period of time, mm -hmm. usually six to eight weeks, mm -hmm. if there's not an improvement, mm -hmm. then the teacher may move. Or the end that student committee may move to have the child evaluated. Got it. Okay. Got it. But in the event that a parent feels that they aren't seeing any academic mm -hmm. gains, mm -hmm. what they can do is they can write mm -hmm. a letter to the Department of right. Special Education mm -hmm. in their school district. Got it. And say they want their child uh, evaluated. How long between the letter and get evaluation? You submit the letter. Right. The district has to send you a form, uh, a district form, mm -hmm. indicating you want the child evaluated. Right. Tri parents, they have to get that to you within 10 days. Got it. Once that form is submitted mm -hmm. to the school district, the child must be evaluated, and you must be sitting for a meeting to review those scores within 60 working days. Beautiful. But that does not include... Mm -hmm like the upcoming holiday break right, got that it. is not okay. part of the 60 okay. days but at least it gives people watching the show a time frame yes that they can't wait four or five months before correct. they get a response <clears throat> now you're not working in the schools right now correct what do you do now because it an, says advocate so um, tell me. i have clients that uh have contacted me that i advocate on their behalf uh so i have um i have had a client mm -hmm. that uh children who have IEPs, mm -hmm. they are to have annual reviews once a year. It's Got like it. the anniversary mm -hmm. of when they qualified for special education. And there are some districts, um, that's that's federal law, by the right. way. Right, uh-huh, that's right. Federal law. Mm -hmm. Once a year you are to have that annual review. And there right. are some school districts that do not adhere to that. So this particular parent kept calling and uh, going down to the district mm -hmm. office and she was being ignored, so she contacted me. Got it. And then, you know, human nature is what human nature is, and once you put something on letterhead... Mm -hmm. It works. It, it Things move very quickly. So the school just kept, like, not doing the annual review, but the kid was still getting services? Yes. Okay. Yes. But the mother... But it's important to follow the 
the, the guidelines yes. like every year? Because on an IEP, there are goals. Got it. That you are, that educational professionals, teachers, mm -hmm. psychologists, mm -hmm. counselors, whomever, have written for your child to achieve in that academic Got school it. year. Got it. The reason, one of the reasons you mm -hmm. have that meeting is to see if those goals have been achieved. Got it. If they are progressing towards the goal or there is no progress Got and that's it. a problem. Got it. Okay. And that's how you measure it. So yes. what do people call you for? They call me um, for, well, when they, if their child is not getting a service, if they're supposed to be receiving physical therapy, occupational therapy, or speech therapy, Got it. they are not. Okay. If their child is supposed to be seeing a reading specialist okay. in school and it's not happening, okay. they're, uh, and the, par the parent is being told their child is getting extra time with the uh, classroom teacher. Classroom teachers are fantastic, but they may not be the reading specialist. That's right. So reading specialist. Correct. Got it. Uh, and they will school districts, not all. I know, and we're not we're not picking. We're just no. doing the right. broad range. We'll try to placate parents. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and when I am, my services are retained, and I go in. We have things happen very quickly because, you know, I'm aware of the different codes. Right. I'm not a lawyer. Right. I cannot legally advise right. anyone. But, but you I, know. But I can remind them of codes. Right. Right. Now, do you also work with parents whose kids are being bullied and the sc they need someone to advocate for them because maybe the yes. school isn't doing yes. what they feel they should be doing? Yes. And how do you do that? What do you do? Uh, so in, in that particular case, uh, my, I would ask, my, my, my mission is to have parents who retain me no longer need my services because they are then able to communicate with school districts mm -hmm. and the school districts are being responsive. That's it. Right. Right. So when I step in, it's a little bit of a course correction for a school Got district. It. Okay. Um, the first thing I would do for that parent is I would ask, have you communicated with the child's teacher? Mm -hmm. Okay, how did that go? Right. It didn't go well. Have you talked to the assistant principal mm -hmm. or the principal? Mm -hmm. How's that going? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not well. Uh, you know, is, if it's not going well, um, then I would intercede. And that, it, I would need to know, is that child receiving special education services? What happens if they're not? Oh, I can still go in. You can still go in. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So it sounds like you're, like you said, you're the advocate. You're the one that the parents call as you charge in on your, your as the white knight as with the your white, sword. With my sword. That's it. I would like to think I, I go in with the, uh, where everyone recognizes my intention is for everyone to come together and right. see what is happening. Right. But yes, I'll go. I was going to say, but you got a sword, don't you, Missy? Well, if you, you know. To. The, when you need one, you need one. There right? you go. There you <laughs> oh. go. <laughs> You're from the Bronx. <laughs> oh, my, my people are. Yeah. Um, uh, that's a compliment. It uh, absolutely is. Okay. Uh, but when I go in, uh, again, because it's on letterhead, people are right. more prone to sit up and, right. and take notice. What do you charge? What do I charge? I charge on a sliding scale because everyone should have um, the ability to have someone advocate for right. them. I like that. So the f to have one set price would right. not be fair, and some people... Right. They don't have it. Right. But they need the help. Yes, absolutely. Because it sounds as <coughs> if, you know, you can get an attorney, but and not that you don't deserve to what you're worth, right. but I think trying to get an attorney is hard to this, for this, for someone whose kid is being bullied, or the IEP or not getting services. I mean, you well, the are retainer the next fee thing. alone for some attorneys, because I have had clients that we've had to then move on right. to that level. Okay. The retainer fee starts at you know, about ten thousand dollars. Right. That's when they can get you, who who knows everything, because you know everything that has to do with the schools and I, codes. I do, but I currently have one school district ignoring me. So we went through the process. Mm -hmm. It has taken us, my uh, this family and myself, um, 
about a year. We went wow. through the process. Mm -hmm. We tried to do things the school district's mm -hmm. way, which you, you have to be right. willing to compromise. Absolutely. Your child might surprise you. Right. Um, there was regression. Mm -hmm. The school district agreed mm -hmm. an out-of-school placement would be best for this child. And we were high-fiving each other That's all right. around. That's right. You got it. But then they didn't follow through. And they stopped returning phone calls. So in that case, we get into it. And in they went, and uh, due to all our paperwork and keeping copious mm -hmm. notes, it happened. They had things happen very quickly. Wow, which right. could have been avoided if they just did what they agreed to do. Yes. And why is why schools slow? They don't react. They don't do what they're supposed to do. What do you, globally, not picking on any one school, just what do you think it is in your opinion? My observation has been the more affluent school districts respond quicker, quicker. and faster. Really? Uh, those school districts, their student scores are usually high. Okay. It behooves them to address the students with uh, disabilities mm -hmm. to address their needs mm -hmm. and get them up and going to right. keep those scores and I show see. growth. Got it. Because uh, state scores aren't just measured if uh, students score within, you know, a, a four, mm -hmm. a three or a four, but with our L students, our English language learner students, mm -hmm. and our special education students, as long as they've made progress themselves, Got it. that's that's so the school gets credit yes. as long as they've made progress. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So it behooves them to make sure that those yes. kids get what they need. Overall, the scores will be higher. Yes. Or where they want them to be. But then when you have school districts that um, uh, have families that fall within the low socioeconomic mm -hmm. status, uh, and those schools you usually find the less affluent families. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of transient students that may come from other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so now you, they are, those districts are very, very overwhelmed with uh, addressing those English language learners, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, in the country they came from if those students didn't attend school mm -hmm. and they're coming in as mm -hmm. uh, at the age of a fourth grader mm -hmm. in our country they then have to provide and educate, have them catch up, right. and learn English, right. and the, do all the work. Yes. So those school districts have a lot to, uh, to deal with. So back to your question, why does it take them a while? Mm -hmm. They very well may be dealing with an awful lot. Got it. So it's not done maliciously. And also you talked about before, there's a budget, right? Every school district has a budget. Yes. And there might be a budget for special, special education. Ed. Right. That, uh, you know, um, they, 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 they will have a budget. And if a student from another district comes in and needs uh, medical equipment, uh, whatever they need, because the IEP is a federal document. Got it. The school has to adhere to it mm -hmm. and they have to take money from that budget. Got it. Give it to that student mm -hmm. who they were not anticipating. Right. right. And now what what's left? Right. Right. For the other students For the other that students. might have an IEP that needs services, yes. there's just no money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. But what I would recommend to parents and and I strongly write I, I actually wrote uh, one of my posts on my blog. Did I say that correctly? I'm not that Cool. It's a blog. A blog, yeah. Um, is you go go to TJ Maxx, go buy yourself a cute little notebook, mm -hmm. or buy yourself something, a notebook, right. and that notebook is dedicated solely to your.